All right, Darren, we are going to talk a little bit about MCP UI and the new Shopify. Uh, yeah. This, so this is what, was, you were so excited about this. Yeah. I mean, so MCP UI, I absolutely, so we, we had them, um, the guys who created MCP UI are on the context, one of the early ones. And um, I had heard a little bit about this project before, but it didn't really grok. It didn't fully understand it. Then when they came on and they were showing it, it just like immediately clicked with me. I'm like, this is beautiful. This is the best thing ever. And so um, as they put that project out there, it's getting adoption. It's starting to be picked up. And so yesterday there was kind of like a huge announcement around this project was that Shopify is integrating it directly into their platform. And so Shopify has been doing a lot of really interesting things. I'm just kind of observing them from afar. They, they seem to really be embracing kind of like um, chat as a new, um, you know, as a means to, you know, shop or, you know, get to products and stuff. And so, uh, so they did an announcement yesterday where they can, they've integrated MCP UI into their uh, chat experience to give more visual, uh, you know, feedback and whatnot. And so it's like, if, if you want, like, let me share my screen. And so I can show this announcement that they have, and then I can kind of demo a little bit so people can understand this a little better. So they, they put out, this is from the engineering. Um, they also uh, announced, I think, on a couple other places or whatever, but this is a good technical breakdown. Um, but the idea is like when you're chatting, you can get these like visual elements here that you can actually click on and interact with. Um, so it's not just a purely text. And, you know, we've done this, like people have done this before, with like very custom chatbots. So it's like my ch custom chatbot understands that the back end is sending some data and then the UI kind of renders the data in a new way, in some interesting way. Like for example, um, oops, I should probably close Discord. But um, so uh, like in some, some uh, unique way, like for example, like Canvas in ChatGPT is like a very interesting UI presentation of um, an actually fairly like kind of like mundane tool call in the back. It's just like write and up like write and update documents. So just kind of like two two calls, and then they render it really pretty in the UI. But so MCP is like this way that we can kind of standardize this whole thing. So 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 what I want to show you is kind of what this means is kind of from MCP, like how how you can actually use this or whatever. So. I have this kind of um, this little pet project I've been working on where I've set up a, an agent um, like this project doesn't really matter at all. But like the idea is like I just set up an agent that's using Claude. Are you sharing something besides the Shopify? Oh, right, right. I thought I shared my whole screen. Man, I'm hold still on. Seeing Shopify. Uh, let me close that and then share screen. Oh, yeah, I, I did the wrong thing there. Um, sorry about that, guys. There you go. That's better. Okay. So um, I, I have this little thing where I set up. Um, this is just some I, a little project I have where I've been testing out random dumb MCP ideas. But like the, the idea is I set up like an agent which just has this model. It's just using this one MCP server. So this MCP server, what this is, is um, it's this, uh, this storefront where you can basically take any Shopify store that exists, like I believe. All birds might be a demo one. I don't know. They always use, they've been using this. So this, I don't know if this is a real thing or it's a demo. <laughs> I, I don't know anything about Shopify. But anyway, so so basically I just copied that MCP server, put it in here. So then I have this, this kind of um, dumb little chat UI that I've, I've built myself. Um, and so in here, let me see if this is working. Hopefully it's all working. I can just say like, oh, can you uh, search for uh, some brown uh, shoes? Right. Do, 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 do. Right. Okay. So then it's making that tool call. And so you can see like, so, so the result here. So the cool thing is not that like, everyone's kind of seeing visual things in a chat box. We've done it in different ways, but the, but the cool thing here is the like standardization of this and how this can work is, so to make this work, all I did was in my chat bot, um, I use that MCP server, which this is just calling like their, their uh, you know, search catalog tool. Um, and then in the code, if I go to my chat bot here, 
this is a React application. I just ripped this off from this project called um, Chat uh, SDK. Um, so this, you can see my UI looks just like this because it is like, I just ripped off this project called chat SDK. And so all I basically did was I took this and pretty much just put in this component from, from the MCP client, from that project, I put in this component and now this understands the responses that are coming from the tool. So instead of just sending text from the response of the tool sending text to the LLM, it sends these resources that which I can then visually show. So to just kind of drive this home a little further, um, I can show you in the inspector, let me make sure my inspector is really working right. So if I go and I grab this, this URL here, I go to the inspector, um, I can connect here, list the tools, and I can do that same search where I just said like uh, brown shoes. And hopefully this will just run. I don't know if it cares about context. It says it's required. So here you can see, this is like your normal, this is the text that's coming back. This is what's getting sent to the LLM. But, but also what's being sent back is these resource here where they have a special URI that starts with the UI forward slash. And then they have a MIME type, which is, there's a couple of different MIME types that's supported. So in this situation, this MIME type is basically telling MCP UI to render this iframe. So you can see this, this uh, uh, iframe, like I can actually just pick it up and go directly there. Um, so I swear, I'm, I'm running Copilot in edge mode. I'm just testing it out. Oops. Oh, why didn't that? You're still oh. on the store now. Did it go to the wrong, wrong thing? Um, uh, maybe I copied the wrong URL. Ah, it's hard to click. Copy. I don't know if this is going to, I'm just going to copy the right URL. I'll put it up here. Yeah, it's a long URL, but, but anyways, but, but you kind of get the idea. Maybe this will render, but so, so what, yeah, I didn't render because I copied the wrong thing, but, but it's fine. I mean, I think you get basically, yeah, it's going to show that iframe, but now there's one more thing on top of this is like, it's not just rendering that content. Now that I have that content, if I go back to my chat bot here, when I click and interact with this, so it's like, I'm like, Oh, this is cool. I want to add it to the cart. This then fires off an event and like this part I haven't fully integrated yet because I, I literally just got this working this morning. Like, I mean, I didn't even like get it working. There wasn't anything to do. I just, I just added the MCP server and um, well, whatever. And I added that little element that I showed you. But so you can see like this is when you click, it fires this intent, which says like, oh, this is what the user wants to do. And then you can wire up the, these intents to like the next behavior of like, because like for add to cart, you might need to do something. And so for Shopify, they do, I, you know, in their native platform, they, I think they have it automatically wired up to the, their like purchasing checkout and stuff like that. But, but, you know, so it's, it's really interesting. The intense stuff is kind of, uh, I'm struggling with some of the stuff. There's, there's some things are working for me and not working for me, but I'm just really excited about this getting to this thing that if, i mean like is is there something that clients are going to have to add to support this like all clients are going to need to yeah yeah, yeah. so all clients so so the idea is because that's kind of what i was showing is like yeah. the clients have to have mcp ui support but then you don't need to have shopify support or you know company b support or service a you just support so you the mcp ui is like basically becoming a standard protocol that you know can be added to any client and more and more services, MCPs that want to expose these UI elements will be able to plug them in. Yeah. But it's already happening. I mean, if Shopify is already doing it, I think we can yeah, start already, already to do it. it. And so, because it's this thing where it's like, I get frustrated where it's like, well, obviously just pure text is not great, but like, I really want to talk to um, uh, chatbots. But like when you switch over to voice mode on uh, most chatbots, like you lose all the text and now it's purely audio. And to me, like that's just as bad as just purely text. I want this like more, you know, I don't know, is it multimodal, like different, you know, I want video and audio, I like it to be visual and everything. So, so this MCP UI is kind of shaping up to be the protocol for, or the standard for how we do visual elements, because not everything needs to be a text or, or audio. Um, Cause for example, like today, if you called up your bank, you, you can call up your bank today, like an automated thing and check you know, what, what's the last five transactions in my checking account? And it will tell you like, so that's the exact same thing you would get out of a chatbot. 
that's a terrible experience. Nobody likes doing that because by the time they got to the fifth transaction, you forgot the first one, right? You want to see a visual thing, you know, you, so it's like, you, or, you know, like, you know, there's a hundred transactions. And so they're not going to read off each one. So anyway, so I think the future of these agents have to be more, you know, more interactive, more, um, you know, free flowing or whatnot, whatnot. Like I'm, yeah. uh, I'm fooling around with other things because there's, this is uh, all linear. It's like each time you get a new widget, like a new thing. Um, but, but there's this other idea with MCP UI where instead of it, like you kind of take this window and you turn it into like a widget. Um, so it would be like more of a long lived thing that you can continue to interact with. And then AI will continue to interact also with the widget. So then, then you basically get this experience where you and the assistant or the AI are collaborating on like a shared resource. So that that's and, and that has been like such an effective model. Like you can see, like with Claude Code, for example, is like cursor was super popular putting the agent in in the IDE. But now they're like, hey, what if I rip the the agent out of the IDE, put it on the side, let you use whatever tool you want, and I'll just put the agent over here. So you're talking to the agent and it's collaborating on, on the assets that you see that are also like in your IDE or in NeoVim or something like that. But but so it's this thing where it's like if we take the, the assistant and kind of move it to the side and we both collaborate on the same things. So anyways, I get super excited about this stuff because I think this is kind of the future. I think this is where this stuff is all going. Um, yeah. Um, awesome, dude. That was, was super exciting to see. I think that, um, you know, just like the six weeks, eight weeks since the UI guys were around to see it kind of gain this level of traction. Would love to see more people incorporating it into the MCPs they're building, especially the big SaaS yeah. companies, big search companies, and others. Like, let's go! Like, this is this is you know, if it's good enough for Shopify, let's start building it into MCPs uh, more broadly. There's, there's a there's a PR out there or an issue or something. I, I wish I had the link. I don't have it, but if you can find it to get VS Code to support MCP UI, because um, VS Code was doing um, a kind of a rich element thing, and then MCP UI, and they're kind of evaluating. I kind of want as many people to jump on, like, because if we can get VS Code supporting MCP UI, then that's a huge jump. It's like, of course, I want like ChatGPT or 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 Claude, like the, the real consumer. But like, if we first get it into the hands of developers, so they can build these things, it's really good in their development tools. Um, that's gonna it's it's gonna be huge to get people building these things because there's 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 so many interesting things we can do, but there's also a lot of little problems. So that's why we need kind of smart minds to get around using the stuff and figuring out how, uh, how we do it. Yeah. Awesome, dude. Um, okay. Well, this was a great talk today. We went kind of longer than usual. Hopefully um, some of you have stuck with us and enjoyed the discussion. Just a quick little uh, note. I'm going to be out at Vegas uh, for AI4 next week, beginning on Tuesday and Wednesday. So if anyone is there doing cool stuff on MCP and you want to come find, uh, find me, or send me a note on LinkedIn or something. We'd love to catch up and uh, maybe get you scheduled to come on the, the context. Otherwise, have an awesome day. Thanks, Darren, and thanks to our speakers. It was a great, great time. <laughs>